We are live. And now we're recording. So uh, welcome everybody. Today is April 19th, 2022. It's, uh, it's myself, Cal, Kat is coming here in just a moment. And uh, we will have our a bit of a quickie today. Because uh, uh, Cal's got something and you know I'm like passing out. So it's, <laughs> it all works out. Uh, for a short session this time. Let's see, I'm live on Discord. Um, Cal, you're still muted. Oh, you got the announcements going? Good call. Okay, so we got the announcements, that's good. And, well, this is interesting. Um, so heads up that I was not aware of. GMR says, Pancake Swap is migrating their cake pools to a new master chef. In a few days. Yep. Will the Cub Cake Kingdom migrate as well? It will. It will. Okay. So I assume yeah, there's so. instructions for that. Yeah. When uh, that migration happens, we're going to uh, integrate a few buttons into the UI. So we'll drop a bunch of instructions for, uh, Miss just jumped in. We'll drop awesome. a bunch of instructions for anyone who is in the cake. Just have to, okay. Should be a quick and easy process. There's the cat. Um, what is up, guys? So yeah. Um, I'm thinking that I might live stream some of this on TikTok. Okay, do it. I just gotta set it up. Yeah, we we're just uh, apparently uh, not sushi. Pancake swap is uh, migrating stuff in a, in a little while, so we'll have to migrate stuff on Cub Cub Beefy. Yep. So this is what version three for yeah it's their v3 yeah v3 pool so are they, are they doing the same thing as uniswap v3 with the windows of liquidity oh, i actually don't know yet because that would be terrible yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was an experiment that did not work out in, in yeah. my opinion like uniswap it's funny um, how uniswap still has that first mover advantage they still have so much so much of the market even though yeah, who knows if they deserve it? Yeah, well, they did innovate the whole thing, so there's that, right? Uh, right, it's definitely helpful. But you know, lots of lots of the swappers are still live on on the Ethereum mainnet. You know, sushi's on the mainnet, more and more popping up for competition. But yeah, it'd be, uh, I haven't followed the, um, the volume shares on. I, I don't follow much of anything on the mainnet uh, just because it's too expensive to play on. <laughs> so, and uh, Kat, you are not in Discord if you want to jump on there. Yeah, I'm not. I'm getting all set up. I didn't realize you guys were already recording. <laughs> yeah, Cal's got to go uh, at, what did you say, one o'clock? Yeah, like one ish. One ish. Okay. Yeah. So, so we're speaking just... of Cal, we should drag Cal onto the mastermind. Walter's got like 8,000 ideas for you. He was texting me all last night about how to level up Leo Finance okay. and what the missing links are. Okay. There he is. Yeah, so, um, uh, you know, all the usual questions, Cal, when all the things, Yep. when, when bonds, when... Um, uh, there, you, you mentioned something about an ex polycub vote thing coming up. Yeah, we got a lot. We got a lot you, to talk about. You dropped some alpha in the Discord, but I don't know yeah. if we actually want to broadcast it or not. Yeah, no, we can't because I think we're pretty close. Um, probably in the next 48 hours, we'll launch the vote. So, so let's talk about. Well, we can jump right into the just since we're leading into it, the DeFi stuff first. So. Um, yeah, we've got the the X, the first. So a lot of people have seen the roadmap, but maybe not the the, the bigger picture roadmap for Polycub. But uh, this week, this past week, we released PHBD, which is uh, Polygon HBD. And uh, as many people know, HBD raised their on-chain fixed interest rate from 12% to 20%, which is a big deal. Very good. Um, Neil approves of, of raising that to 20%. We were talking about that, you know, months ago, I think, talking about what would happen, you know, would Neil flip bullish for, for the Hive ecosystem if <laughs> if uh, HVD's interest rate was competitive with UST. That's one um, of the elements, yes. Yeah, it is. So now we need on-ramp and off-ramp liquidity. So Polycub and the Leo Finance community has, you know, basically 
aim to fix this this on-ramp, off-ramp liquidity issue by launching PHPD. So if you go to polycub.com slash farms now, there's a PHPD-USDC pool as of you know the last couple of days. And it's almost at 300K, it keeps growing. Um, and a lot of people are unstaking HPD right now and, and have been since that announcement. So I'm gonna assume that a lot of HPD is getting ready to be flowed into PHPD-USDC. And you know I've put out a lot of posts through Leo Finance talking about how I wanna get that to $5 million because to me, that's kind of like apex liquidity to onboard a lot of different, basically onboard a lot of different whales into, into you know, HVD and, and the Hive ecosystem, which is good for Leo Finance as an ecosystem in a lot of ways. Um, so I guess two ways to break it down is it's good for HVD and, and Hive because, you know, without this on-ramp, off-ramp liquidity, whales will not want HVD. That's just, you know, a plain and simple fact. I tried to get my hands on a bunch of HPD um, before we launched PHPD, and I was able to get about 100,000 through an OTC deal, but there's no exchange I can go to to just buy a bunch of HPD easily. Um, and obviously, you'll end up paying a premium. I paid like a 2% premium. Um, you'll end up paying anywhere from like 1% to 2%, usually, if you can find someone willing to sell it. Um, and uh, so that on ramp liquidity is, is a big issue. The other issue that most people don't think about is the off-ramp liquidity because no one wants to buy something that they can't sell, right? Like you don't want to buy a piece of real estate in you know, the middle of nowhere where uh, you know, maybe in a hundred years, it'll be a good investment because that land starts getting developed. But right now you can't exit it. There's no liquidity to exit uh, if, you, if you needed liquidity for any reason. So same thing with HPD and, and any stable coin is that if you if you want to earn yield on it, that's great, but you need to be able to get in and out of it easily. Um, so PHBD aims to solve that liquidity issue. And uh, I think it does it in a great way because it brings HBD to the AMM world, the automated market maker world where, uh, you know, swapping is a lot more efficient, trading is more efficient. Um, and obviously on Polygon, the fees are super low. So that's awesome. Um, and then for, so that's how it's good for Hive and HBD. How it's good for Leo Finance is, is also multifold. So it's good for it's good for the Leo Finance broad ecosystem, you know, from social to DeFi, because um, you know, onboarding people through HVD and, and building the Hive ecosystem basically just builds Leo Finance because the more people that use Hive, the more people use Leo Finance. It's just kind of correlated in that way. Um, and then more at a granular granular level um, on Polycub. Um, the Polycub Treasury earns a lot of revenue from, from PHBD. So uh, I want to start putting out some reports now that we've got some more data about PHBD and how it's going so far. But, um, you know, the, the Treasury basically earns a 0.25% wrapping fee every time someone wraps or unwraps uh, PHBD. Um, so it's earning from that. And then it's also earning from arbitrage revenue. Um, and then it's also earning 10% on all the HVD that is currently wrapped because half of it, half of it is kept liquid for day-to-day -day wraps and unwraps and half of it is staked for the 20% on chain rate. So that's 10% on the full amount of HVD that's held in that account. Um, so basically the, the treasury is earning from these three, you know, big things. And if, uh, you know, one of the reasons why we want to get PHBD deck, PHBD dash USDC up to 5 million is because, that will be a lot of liquidity to facilitate like, you know, millions of dollars in, in trading on HBD every single month, which would be millions of dollars in potential wrapping revenue uh, and obviously arbitrage revenue um, for, uh, for Polycom and then also that 10%. So I think PHBD is gonna end up being, you know, one of the biggest <laughs> revenue streams for, for Polycom um, in the long run. And, uh, and I think that's, that's super bullish and, Obviously, if it goes really well, then we're going to do P-Hive. And then on the Cub side, we're going to do B, HBD, and B-Hive. Um, so I think that could be that could be extremely you know, beneficial to Polycub as a protocol. And then obviously, Cub's getting its own protocol and liquidity once we launch that. One thing I mentioned in Discord, too, is that you know having, like, let's say we launch BHBD. Obviously, we want PHBD to be the focus for a while. We need sufficient liquidity there. In the long run, if we then launch PHBD, um, or BHBD, um, we're going to have two of the deepest pools for HBD trading, which means that arbitrage is going to happen in those two primary pools. 
And if arbitrage is happening between those pools, then we're just getting wrapping fees on both sides. Um, so Cub is getting a ton of wrapping fees for uh, its protocol and liquidity, and Polycom is getting a ton of wrapping fees for its protocol and liquidity. So um, I think that's very bullish for both Cub and Polycom. So my PSA is to take all of your HBDs and put them into PHBD dash USDC. Yeah. The APR so, right now is like 50%. Yeah, looking at it, 51.57. Uh, so, you know, there's a supply issue though, right? So, you know, at last I saw from Dow's reports, there was about 9 million HBD total. Now that number can change, right? People can convert and, and generate more HBD and more is printed every day, you know, through just general, uh, I don't know if the witnesses get HBD or if they're just high, but anyway, HBD is HBD is printed for post rewards and stuff as long yep. as you know we're below the haircut limit. So, um, so the you know so there's nine million to go around at the moment. If if we had a pool of five million on Polycub, that would be two and a half million USDC, two and a half million PHBD. Uh, so that's already a giant chunk of that nine million. You know. Uh, so what number would we have to see in order to make uh, BHBD not cannibalizing the liquidity on Polyco? Yeah, I think, I think I would like to see somewhere in the range of one to two million dollars on PHBD before we even start to consider BHBD. Um, and and obviously the the APY, you know, we want to keep the APY super high. We want to make that, we want to make it very obvious that it's just the smart decision to put it into those pools. Um, so yeah, I, the minimum requirement for me is to see one to two million on PHBD before we before we go over there, um, and and kind of launch it that way. And I do think it would actually it would be very beneficial to PHBD dash USDC and, and Polycub. Um, if we had, uh, if we had BHBD launched and it's because of that arbitrage, like right now, if you do arbitrage, it's actually kind of difficult because there's such low liquidity on the only places where you can get HBD that when you arbitrage through PHBD, it's, it's hard to then buy back. Like, let's say that you buy HBD on, uh, you know, um, the internal exchange and then you wrap it and sell it on PHBD, um, it's actually very difficult to just get your hands on HPD on the internal exchange. So if the HPD was there um, and obviously the price was lower than PHPD, then you could just buy it there in a deep pool and then sell it in another deep pool and arbitrage becomes a lot easier. Um, so I, I do think it's very beneficial. So that's why I, I'd like to see like one, two million and then we can start to think about it. And obviously the launch of it is literally pressing a button. So that's, that's pretty nice. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about PHBD. I think it's, I think it's like, I think it's the most valuable, not necessarily the most, just because of the, the you know, excluding Polycub itself, it's the most valuable vault on the platform. Um, so. Most valuable in terms of what? In terms of revenue that it can generate. So it's the most valuable to the protocol itself. And, um, you know, uh, I know uh, some people had asked about the, um, so the earnings that Polycom is making on all these, the you know the the amounts locked or or vaulted into savings on Hive plus the wrap fees and all that, where does all that go? Yeah, it goes straight into the Polycom protocol and liquidity. So that protocol and liquidity is LPing assets, building itself, and then come July ish timeframe, um, that protocol is going to start buying Polycom uh, off the market and deploying it for LP incentives. Um, so obviously everything flips eventually where right now we're kind of in DeFi 1.0 where uh, LP incentives are from inflation. And then, you know, over the next one, two, three months, it's going to start to dwindle away at that inflation. And we're going to look at, uh, we're going to be looking at basically, you know, uh, just polycubs coming onto the market are just polycubs that were already on the market. And then we're buying them and putting them into the LP incentive pool. So that, that kind of leads us nicely into the governance. So, um, so PHBD was kind of a big thing on the roadmap to add, even before they did the 20% change. The 20% change just kind of lit a fire under us and said, look, we got to do this now. And, and 
the and HBD needs this as much as Polycub does. Um, so so we obviously we we kickstarted it, got it out of the door, and then uh, and it's been it's been working really smoothly. So the next obviously bonding. And then this X polycode, the governance is ready. So we've kind of done like a little bit of testing um, and we're going to do kind of like a, a kind of like a trial run of a certain type of, of governance voting. Um, it may not be the final structure of how a governance vote will look, especially in terms of UI. We may not even launch the UI for governance voting, but we're going to have the first governance vote. And obviously there's going to be a post with instructions of how to do it. It's going to be super easy, but um you'll just have to broadcast basically a transaction on on polygon um so we're going to have the first governance vote and that first governance vote is a proposal it's on a proposal to uh reduce the uh penalty window for uh polycub claiming so right now the penalty window is 90 days so if you if you claim a harvest uh if you harvest rewards on polycub they go into your claim vault where they have to sit for 90 days until they get unlocked and then you can claim them. You can, the, the alternative is that you can claim them instantly, but you pay a 50% penalty to X polycub holders if you, if you claim it early. Um, it, this proposal is to reduce that 90 day window to there's, there's gonna be, it's basically like a multiple choice test. So you'll be able to choose, do you want to stick it at, keep it at 90 days, reduce it to 30 days or reduce it to 15 days. So there's gonna be three choices um on this governance vote and uh and you'll be able to just vote for which one you which one you think and the vote that you cast will be stake weighted based on how much x polycub you have in your wallet so when when this post goes live it'll have all the instructions but basically you're just going to broadcast a transaction from your wallet that has x polycub in it and you'll just broadcast it and basically dictate which of those three options you want and then your um you know, at the end of the vote window, it'll tally up everyone's votes based on X polycub staked. Um, and then the protocol will basically uh, basically deploy the, the update to whatever gets decided. So if people decide that 30 days is the best window and that's what X polycub holders choose, then uh, the, the window is gonna get reduced to 30 days. Um, this is kind of a good indication of where we're headed for polycub, which is, um, you know, with PHBD just launching, with bonds about to launch, with um, governance launching, and then with um, collateralized lending kind of on the horizon, um, the the governance structure behind choosing certain paths for Polycub is very important. So this voting window is just one aspect, obviously a big aspect of the platform. Um, after this, you're going to see a lot of continuous proposals for changing, and everyone. You know, anyone with X Polycub will basically be able to launch a proposal and then people will be able to vote on them. Um, but um, after this, you're going to see different proposals to say, like, we want to move, you know, 10% more Polycub yield into the PHBD vault. Um, so these proposals will basically dictate where yield gets deployed on the platform. And I think that's going to get really interesting because um, obviously with, with PHBD there and then with other vaults like, like Weath Bitcoin, uh, Polycub USDC, you can just imagine that there's going to be like some whale wars over where to put yield on the platform. And if you hold a lot of, like, let's say you're a Polycub whale uh, and you're in Polycub-USDC, you're going to want to buy up a lot of X Polycub stake to ensure that your yield stays the same or increases over time uh, through these proposal votes. And if people start, if let's say that some PHBD whales start coming in and they say, we want to move, you know, 90% more yield into the into the PHBD dash USDC vault, and they start buying up Polycub um, and staking it as X Polycub to vote. Um, then they're going to be kind of almost threatening your yield on on uh, you know whatever vault you're in. So then you're going to want to buy in to X Polycub as well, and then make sure that you can vote up your yield. Um, so it's if you've been paying attention to the curve whale wars that have been happening. This is essentially the X Polycub whale wars, um, and I think it could get it could get kind of fun, um, especially if we launch, you know, P Hive and PHPD, and we have all these different vaults. Um, and then also as an X Polycub holder, you're going to want to vote vaults that are providing a lot of value to the platform. So that's why I expect that PHPD is going to get the PHPD dash USDC vault is going to get a lot of APY added to it over time, um, because I I do believe that it's going to be it's going to be giving the most revenue to the platform along with, you know, a lot of people on Polycub just having a lot of HPD. 
its hive. Um, so I, I think the governance is going to be very cool. And you know, you look at platforms like Uniswap that and all these governance tokens, they all launch their their platforms and they said, Oh yeah, this is a governance token. And then, you know, two years later, some of them still don't even have governance. So I think it's cool that Polycub's launching our governance within you know six weeks. Yeah. That'll be uh, that'll be interesting. So, you know, it hasn't been 90 days yet. So nobody has been able to harvest or to claim their their deferred you know, vault earnings. So what does it look like? So like, you know, what, one of the challenges I have with just how this imagining in my head is that, so I harvest from, from the farm, uh, farm in the kingdoms that I'm in, it then goes into my pending balance. But, you know, as I harvest day after day, you know, there's different amounts in there. So right. let, let's just say for the sake of argument that the, that the 15 day vote passes, uh, which I think it will because people want stuff sooner. Um, so after 15 days, how does the display look and how do I know which coins are, are available to claim without penalty and which coins are still in that penalty phase? Yeah, so it actually, uh, on the UI, if you go to that homepage, it says locked and unlocked Polycub um, on, that, on that UI. Ah, so it does. So I've yeah, just never so, seen no, you know, un unlocked has <laughs> just never been there. So. Right, right, exactly. So there's two different buttons. So you can claim the locked or you can claim the unlocked. So let's say that you're, let's say the window gets reduced to 15 days, and let's say that every day you're claiming your harvest. So they're always every single day you're just adding to that locked balance. Then you know, 15 days go by, and then on that 15th day you're going to see the first uh, tranche of what you harvested and uh, into that lock vault is going to flip to unlock. So it'll subtract from lock and it'll go into the unlocked. Um, and then, and then you'll kind of see that. And then the next day, and then you can claim unlocked with no penalty, obviously. Um, then the next day you'll see, cause you had, cause 15 days prior, if you've been doing it every day consistently, 15 days prior, you had your first uh, claim, then you had your set or your first harvest, then your second harvest. So then you'll see your second harvest move from lock to unlocked. So basically, if you're doing it consistently, you'll see that consistently flowing from lock to unlock. Um, that makes sense. So yeah, I would like to, you know, if, if we start getting more complex with the UI, which I do uh, want to get into, um, adding some sort of display where you can you can see the specific harvests in the, you know, how much each harvest has. Um, obviously, it's super complex, which is why it's not on there right now. Um, but basically being so, able to see the individual ones would be nice. So when do you think we're going to have this vote? I think, I think we're going to launch the vote in the next 48 hours. Um, okay. And then you'll be able to start voting and the, and the vote window uh, will be just a few days. Um, so everyone will have a couple of days to, to get their vote in. And then, okay. uh, and then after the vote is completed, how long between that time and the actual changes made? So as soon as the vote is completed, the transaction will be queued into the uh, time lock. So um, literally within, within seconds or minutes of the vote closing, it'll be queued into the time lock. And uh, so like, let's just say for example, that it gets reduced from 90 days to 30 days. Within, you know, let's just say within an hour of, of, the, um, of that vote closing, um, there's going to be a transaction queued into the time lock that says uh, change the window from 90 to 30 days. Um, How long is the time lock? The time lock is 24 hours. So basically within 24 hours of the vote closing, that's when the change goes live. Okay. So we're, so a couple of days to start the vote, a couple of days of vote, and then another day to actually see the change. And then whatever the new time period is. Right. So I would say it's probably going to be done by next Tuesday. Uh, so the next AMA, uh, just because if it takes us two days to get the vote open and then we leave it open for like five days, then it should be done by Tuesday. Okay. All right. So then uh, if, if we get a 15 day window, which again, that's, that's what I'm expecting. So basically three weeks from today is when the first, you know, actual unlock payments would come out. If all that happens. What do you mean by that? So it'd be a week from now for the actual change and then oh, okay. 15 days after that for the actual unlocks to appear. Right. One thing though, too, is that anyone who's been waiting for 90 days, it will like, I guess that's a good question. I, I saw that somewhere. I don't remember where, um, but um, you know, what happens if like, let's say that you've, you've already claimed 
or let's say that you've already harvested and it's sitting in your locked claim. And then we reduce the window to 30 days and you've been waiting like 20 days, right? It'll only take 10 more days for that to unlock. It's not going to reset you back to zero. That's good. Although very, very few people have done that. <laughs> right. There's very, yeah. Then I think I saw another question, which is, uh, you know, if, if the window does get reduced, is that going to create a flood of polycub that's been waiting in the, in the locked uh, vault? And I looked at how much polycub's in there. It's not going to. Is not going to do anything. Nobody's waiting for 90 days. So I do think we designed the, manic, the mechanic a little bit too uh, harshly. 90 days is forever in crypto. Uh, right. Uh, but, you know, on the flip side, you know, if you got into the ex-polyco, then you, you reap the benefit of everybody else not having any patience. And exactly. I'm right there with you. I, I have not waited a, a single time. <laughs> nope. nope. Like I harvest, it hits the locked, and then I say claim locked. Yep. And thousands of polycub go into the ex-polycub. <laughs> thousands so, and thousands. Yeah. So, Mitch, are we? Are did you get the the streaming set up? Uh, that's why I was on mute because I have to take my headphones out, obviously, so the volume comes through my speakers to my phone. So I was just in listen mode, but uh, at this point. Uh, I'm going to end it because we've pretty much lost everyone. I don't know if they could hear well or not because I couldn't really ask questions. I should have muted you guys and actually talked on the uh, live stream for a second. But uh, yeah. when we first jumped on, like it stacked up. At one point, we peaked out at like 60 viewers and then it dwindled, dwindled, dwindled. Yeah. Oh, Cal just joined. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to see what it looked like. Well, how can yeah. you? Well, I had it uh, on a different angle because I had it hanging from my... Uh, the phone holder but um obviously you can hear us through your computer but i was curious what the sound was yeah it sounds yeah, definitely good. definitely echo you know feedback issues to to figure out um yeah it you sounds know, good. on, on right, your good on enough. your yeah, stream I'm setup do they have right a TikTok the speaker off? all right well i will close this because then otherwise i'm going to echo on discord so yeah. let me mute Discord again. Short attention span platform. That is for sure. Or it's the TikTok is the whatever happened to Vine? Did they just die? Vine? Second. Yeah. Yeah. It's done. <laughs> <laughs> and now all the six second stuff is on TikTok. Yep. It wasn't the right time for Vine, but now it is. Yeah. Um so yeah, the uh it'd be it'd be good to have more streams. You should have danced, Cat. That's right. Gotta, you gotta entertain the people. Oh, you can't even hear me. <laughs> there he is. You do have to entertain the people. Um, so yeah, I mean, total views, 227 views over that 25 minutes or so. But I mean, most of those are people jumping in and then dumping out. Um, apparently the key is right after you go live, you get that mad rush because I guess people get notifications. Um, so it's all about, I guess, grabbing their attention somehow most people probably jumped on were like wtf is this i mean outside of me putting leo finance uh ama in the uh description yeah. but yeah. whatever it exposes people to it they see the leo finance logo they see cal and neil's face i couldn't get myself really into the picture <laughs> <laughs> were you um, were you videoing your screen yeah i was videoing my screen okay yeah it's pretty much what you have to do I should, I need to get like a legit better stand. I have like my little makeshift like ring here thing here. I just hang the phone holder on my microphone. Yeah. But even so, like, yeah, because then I can put the phone back somewhere, but still I need it close enough to the speaker. So yeah. but I mean what I've so I have I have 3029 followers. Um so that's the fact that 227 people jumped in at a random time on a tuesday isn't too bad at all yeah that's what eight percent something like that that'll work we'll take it now uh in our in our private uh discord chat i i posted a tweet that i found earlier or a reddit post sure actually to throw. of um of uh, crypto influencers and their price lists. This <laughs> <laughs> so we gotta get we gotta get cat up into the range where you can start uh, start charging for, uh, for yeah well something that's worthwhile like I said I've gotten two offers for um, 
a hundred dollars to do uh, a spot, but I was just like, meh, because I, I to just research a new project and see if I would even, you know, because I'm not going to shill it unless I think it's a cool project. I was like, well, you're not going to make it in the shill game like that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> wow, I have to learn. I, I got to learn how to sell out. So right. I'm not. I'm not there yet. We got to wait. Once I get the uh, once I get the fu money, then I'll sell out and get more fu money because then I can tell people fu. It's That's a right. self-perpetuating uh, cycle. There you go. But yeah, uh, yeah. My, so just have Neil, to pay in Leo. So that they have there you go. Neil, my goal is to just continue continue to have more followers than the um, Cal Leo TikTok account. <laughs> <laughs> just 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 out of spite. Just like good luck. I'm still ahead of you, bro. You're playing catch up. <laughs> and I don't even have, a while. and I don't even have a VA. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. No, I did. Uh, actually, I got to, I'm going to do one on the, uh, the Facebook uh, login ad. That's easy content. I would have done it last night, but I was just too tired by the time I saw it. Yeah. That's a good thing to talk about. So we, um, in case you missed it, actually, there hasn't been an announcement yet because we've been just testing, but um, it's live. We're doing it live. Um, if you go to leofinance.io and sign out and then hit log in or get started, um, you can see that there is now a new Leo Infra update. So you can sign up and sign in with uh, Facebook. And uh, this is a, it's a Facebook, uh, we're calling it a Hive Light account. So um, if you don't know how those work, basically, um, we have this, this, uh, system that we built called Leo infra. Um, and what it does is basically you click Facebook, it verifies that you own the Facebook account that you're using. Uh, so it uses like, uh, it uses Firebase to log you in basically. Um, and then it, it connects you to leofinance.io and then it creates on the back end, it creates you a hive account. So you get to choose your username on hive and obviously you have to make sure that it's available. Um, and once you do that, it creates you a Hive account and it links it through Firebase to your Facebook account uh, or Twitter. If you use Twitter, um, it links it to your Facebook or Twitter account. And then um, and then you can basically keep signing in to leofinance.io with Facebook or Twitter and you never have to download the Hive keys uh, unless you want to. And uh, obviously, over time, what we're going to be building out is that, you know, when Leo gets added to your wallet or when Hive gets added to your wallet, it's going to say, you know, it's going to basically have a little pop-up window that says, you know, secure your account by uh, downloading your private keys and storing them in a, in a secure location. And it'll obviously have a bunch of explanations about what that means and how to do it. Um, but the whole idea behind Leo Infra and how that works is that when people sign up for anything on the internet, they want to do it in less than 10 seconds. They don't want to be sitting there figuring out what private keys are and how to do it, especially when it comes to like a social media. It's one thing to do that if you're using like MetaMask to buy NFTs you know, cause you're already doing something financial. You've got a good incentive to do it. Uh, when it comes to like social media though, people are not going to want to sit there for five minutes and figure out how to, how to, you know, what a private key is and how to store it. Um, so what we're doing with Leo Infra is basically letting people log in, use the site, earn some Leo, see it in their wallet. And then we're going to tell them about their private keys and how to use it. Um, and how to basically get a full hive account, even though they have a full hive account from the beginning. Um, and, uh, and we added Facebook login to Leo mobile first. And then we basically ported that from Leo mobile to Leo desktop, um, which is a good indicator of what's to come. And I talked about this in the last AMA that we're doing something called Leo merge, where we're taking the mobile app and we're merging it with the desktop app to create a new desktop app. Um, and uh, this is obviously a, a, a kind of a, a first, basically a first step in the Leo merge direction, which is, merging some of those features from Leo Mobile to Leo Desktop. Um, and then obviously there's more full merge uh, in the long run, um, which kind of leads me into a small rant on um, the Web3 stuff that we've been working on. So um, just a quick update on some stuff. So V1 Leo Mobile is um, very close to being released. It's in the very soon universe. And uh, we actually just released um, a new Leo mobile version to Android and uh, iOS. When was it? Like less than 48 hours ago. Um, so you may have seen that. I haven't put out any announcements about it yet. Um, so uh, that new mobile version has a couple new features, um, which are basically on the roadmap for V1. Um, so one is to basically filter in the search bar uh, by tags. So if you go to the um, let's see. If you go to the search section on Leo Mobile, 
you'll see that you can you can hit search and then it lets you search by people or by tags. Um, and the next, so that's that's the first step in the, the new search feature, which is full text search. So right now you can search by people. Well, well before you could search by people, that was it. Um, and then as of like yesterday, we launched it so that you can search by tags. And the next launch will be the full text search where you can search by any keywords, any words at all. You can search a sentence. And uh, we have a new database. It's a it's a Redis database, and uh, it'll it basically categorizes all Leo Finance content, and you can search it by uh, rich keyword search. Um, so that'll be the next iteration that we launch. And uh, I was just talking to the dev this morning, and I think it'll be ready um, maybe by the end of next week. Um, so the back end is pretty much done, and now it's it's on him to put it into the front end of Leo Mobile, and that search feature. Again, in the in the bigger Leo merge picture, that search feature is going to get ported from mobile to desktop uh, in the Suniverse. Um, so, so that'll be nice. And then uh, outside of that, for V1, the last thing we need after that is notifications. Um, and then once we have notifications, then we're ready to to push V1 into the App Store, uh, the full App Store on iOS. So that'll be nice. Um, that'll be a lot of exposure, and obviously we'll do a lot of marketing about that, a lot of press releases talking about the newest web three app hitting the hitting all app stores. And obviously this web three app is a lot different than the other, you know, quote, quote unquote, web three apps that are out there because it's actually web three. Um, so yeah, it's, I, I get confused as to what people consider web three um, yeah. these days. So uh, we'll see. <laughs> I mean, people, people love to just slap the label on now. Yeah. When I, when I, teach the normies i basically describe web3 as you know platforms where you own your content and you also can get compensated for that content you know right. yeah it's but not I, it's, i'm seeing people describe like uh like DeFi as web3 it's like well i mean i've kinda. seen that i mean yeah. eh, sort of i mean but yeah, but when I, I just stitch, stick more to social media uh, when I explain Web3 because most people are familiar with social media and it's easy. It's like, listen, you know, we basically are giving away our content to Facebook and Twitter in return for hearts and likes. Right. I was like, with Web3, you own your content. So instead of Facebook or Twitter making the money, you actually get compensated and you have control of your content and you own your content. And that is due to basically, uh, you know, keys, you know, in the end, right. your private well, key. Do you own it once it's on the blockchain? Uh, yes and no. I mean, yeah, it's public, but no one can like take it and alter it. Right, but you can't either. <laughs> so. Yeah, but you created it, so I guess you own. I mean, and yeah. if there's any compensation linked to it, you're the one getting it. That so I true. think that's what people look at as owner. Like ownership is basically do I do I get compensated off of it? Like that for me, that's how people look at ownership. Everything comes down to money. Yeah, that's fair. So uh, and Troy is saying that uh, with CyberX, that's what they're going to do as well. He's saying between Leo and all the games on Hive, which is code for Splinterlands, <laughs> Hive is going to be mainstream this year. Which, uh, well, in that case, um, calling all devs. Let's create another game. We can call it—I uh, don't know—something. Yeah. Kitty. I mean, Kitty so Rag, Cat Hunt. Yeah, I mean, Ragnarok is coming out. That's that is point. true, which I'm excited uh, about. That's that's the only Hive airdrop I'm actually excited about. Yeah. Um, yeah. After one week, who, who who is paying anything? Which is nobody. But um, those are other issues. Uh, a beehive. That, I, I, that is another issue because I've had a lot of, you know, people I've on board talk about that. They're like, I don't understand why it's one week and then you never can make money. Like, he's like, if people are reading my content a year later, he's like, I can't, like, and they vote on it. He's like, that's dumb. And I was like, I get it. But at some point, I mean, you have to have a payout period or it's got to just be a staggered thing where it's like it pays out once every X amount of time, which I don't know what yeah. that would look like code wise. But well, I think we can safely say never going to happen on the hive base layer because of the tie in with governance. Um, agreed that's that's why there's a limit is because of the, uh, so i know we have like 18 to 20 minutes ish um yeah i do want to hit beehiver's question before we yeah i was gonna say i was, I was just gonna ask you about if you yeah, get the question go for it no you can do it you can do it 
All right. Um, so B Harvard's asking why PHBD USDC and not UST, which is Terra's stable coin on Polycub. Both would give you 20%. Why why is HBD more important for Polycub than UST? Um is he he's saying PHBD UST? US uh actually I don't know. Yeah, I, I, well, I assumed he meant UST USDC, but Oh no! I assumed he meant P H B D U S T maybe. Oh no, that would make sense though because it's on Polygon. Yeah, no, it would have to be. No, I mean, stable. there are USD contracts on Polygon as as wormhole versions of UST. Gotcha. Yeah, Although, I mean, I could. Go ahead. I was just say. I mean, if we had UST on there, I guess that gives us exposure to Terra Luna money. Anyway, I don't know. Go ahead. Yeah, I uh, I don't think it really matters all that much to have UST because um, essentially the way that PHBD works is that since you're wrapping HBD to PHBD, we, as in the protocol, hold the HBD that backs all of that PHBD. And that means that the protocol can stake it on the high blockchain for the base 20% APR. Uh, with UST, um, obviously, since it's not a polycub wrapping protocol it won't own the ust um so you would still just have ust um so it essentially be the same thing as usdc where the protocol doesn't own that ust um so it's not earning the base 20 percent um but just in in general the reason why usdc was chosen is because usdc is the largest stable coin on polygon um so the same way that you know uh, with P uh, with BHBD, we'll do BHBD dash BUSD um, on on Cub Finance. Yeah. Although uh, USDC or no UST is flipping the USD like now <laughs> in terms mm -hmm. of overall uh, market cap. Yep. Which is just you know you know an amazing testament to. Um, to how powerful, you know, paying twenty percent on a stablecoin is, because <laughs> Luna, Luna went from nowhere, you know, a year ago to you know a top ten coin, and you know, flipping having its stablecoin beat out Binance's. Um, so yeah, that's... it's it's number two now in terms of um, what was I looking at? It it showed uh, you know number of projects, which obviously it wasn't number two, but then in terms of money on the blockchain, it's literally like number two now. Mm. Like is there, Ethereum still number one, and then it was number two, and I think Binance is number three, which is crazy in the time span. Yep. And uh, <laughs> I saw a tweet from Do Kwan sh showing that I guess he had a baby girl named her Luna. <laughs> it's just <laughs> I don't know if it was if it was real or not, but uh, but uh, it's funny. So you know, just make a few uh, a few billion dollars, and then you can name your kids whatever you want. Right. At least Luna's not a one of the weird names from celebrities and stuff. No, Luna actually seems like, you know, somewhat of a actual name <laughs> as opposed to like uh, when, you know, ESPN was like in its real heyday and people were naming that kid SB. <laughs> that I didn't see. Oh, time. yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that's, that's that is a thing. There is there are a few kids running around with the name SB. Why not? Good old SB award. <laughs> All right. So um, uh, Troy's got a question. Is the WLEO code to wrap a high second layer token open source? Have some from FB slow yet also have issues. Project will pay for help if your dev has time. Um, there is, so Acid Yo actually reached out and said something about wrapping Posh, uh, the Posh token onto Polycub and launching a vault for it. Um, and then Edicted said something else related to Peahive in Discord, which those two things happening at the same time kind of gave me an interesting idea. Um, so if anyone wants to wrap one of their Hive second layer tokens, they can reach out to me and, and I can potentially help them with it. Um, and, and obviously, you know, potentially the, the team can help them with it. Just obviously we got a lot 
a lot on our plate, but um, we do have this code ready that I actually had built back in the Cub IDO when, when the Cub IDO contracts were launched, which was, which was intended to create a launch pad for all Hive Engine tokens where um, any Hive Engine token could reach out and basically do an IDO on Cub, which is also still possible. Um, but that code could also be used to wrap um, Hive Engine, other Hive Engine tokens onto uh, Polycub uh, and the Polygon network and create a vault for them. The interesting thing that that, that obviously creates is that we don't want to launch a bunch of random Hive Engine vaults and distribute yield to those vaults for no reason. Um, the cool thing though that I was thinking about is that if we do launch these wrapped Hive Engine tokens, um, we can obviously have certain requirements around how big they are in terms of market cap and stuff. Like, like an SPS or a deck vault might be cool because they obviously have bigger market caps and usage. Um, so if we do launch one of these wrapped token vaults um, and Polycub manages it as the, basically as the treasury wrapping service, the treasury Oracle, um, then Polycub's treasury will benefit by having those wrapping fees the same way it does with PHBD. And then obviously the internal arbitrage bot, um, and uh, and then you know it basically earning from those two methods, um, so that gets interesting. But then kind of the other part to that was what Edicted said, which is that um, he was saying because I was talking about you know one day we want to do like a Hive vault, um, but but it you know we don't know how much yield we want to necessarily put to that vault. He said just launch the vault with zero percent APR and then launch a governance vote at the same time um, where people can use their ex polycub to vote how much yield should go to that vault. So cool. the cool idea behind that is that if we let some Hive Engine tokens go to the platform and launch vaults at a 0% APR, then we can launch governance votes for all those vaults or they can launch their own governance votes to see how much yield should go to those. So like imagine the posh token wants to be wrapped into the P posh on, on polycub. And they launch a vault at 0% APR on Polycub. Um, so Polycub will obviously generate revenue from the fees and the arbitrage on that. Um, and then also um, that vault will launch at 0% APR and then the governance vote will take place. And anyone who's a posh holder that wants to earn yield on Polycub will have to buy X Polycub or buy Polycub and stake it as X Polycub to vote on the governance vote to get yield into that vault. So they're going to need they're going to need polycub it creates a utility for polycub to basically drive yield into their vault and if other people start buying up more polycub and distributing their yield into other high engine tokens or other you know phbd or or weath bitcoin and then it, it can create more of that whale war over over polycub stake just to vote governance on where the yield should go which is kind of a cool vision for where polycub could end up long term yeah. now i have not looked recently but Last time I checked the the Hive Engine uh, token lists, you know there was only like five or six tokens that had any uh, amount of like real volume day right. to day. Um, so, you know, so I guess the question is, you know, do they do those tokens have enough of a user base uh, to to make that viable? So, like, <laughs> uh, Marky in in this in the general chat the other day was kind of wailing on Lassie cash and apparently like Lassie has like all of it and nobody else has any of it, but you know, he creates his own market. So it has a market cap. Um, so, I mean, you know, there definitely needs to be some kind of uh, threshold criteria to make sure that you yeah. know, you're not just wasting everybody's time. Right. Yeah. I think we would create, you know, some, uh, we, we would definitely create some minimum minimum requirements. Like maybe you need to have a certain amount of uh, liquidity in like a diesel pool or a certain amount of trading volume on Hive Engine uh, on the order books um, just to even be considered. And then once you're considered, we can launch the vault at 0% APR and then uh, the governance votes can decide what, what should be distributed into, the, into your vault in terms of yield. I like it. But it gives a cool use case to Polycom. Um, it gives a really cool use case to Polycub um, in terms of people wanting to buy it for the governance votes. So then yeah, you can absolutely. imagine a future where there's, you know, you've got P Leo, you've got PHBD, you've got P Hive, you've got P, you know, Posh, and let's just say, let's just say there's two other Hive Engine tokens that come out that are sufficiently, you know, uh, used and and could potentially be launched. Um, and there are some communities on Hive. I know like the Bro Token and some other communities 
uh, SPI actually have decent capital behind them. So um, they do have the potential to launch, you know, relatively deep pools. Um, you know, let's just say there's like three Hive Engine tokens that jump on, and then you've got P Leo, P Hive, PHBD. So that's six different tokens that are all wrapped, all um, wrapped by the Polycub Oracle, which means that that Oracle is going to be earning all the revenue from six different tokens being wrapped and unwrapped and arbitrage, uh, which is really nice for for the protocol and liquidity. And then on top of that, you have the the governance votes that are continuously taking place, where you know basically these different vaults are going to fight over whatever yield is there. So P Leo holders are going to be fighting with PHBD holders who are going to be fighting with P Posh holders over where yield is going and how much they they want into their own vault. Um, and obviously, it's all determined stake weighted on how much X Poly Cub you hold. So yeah. that could get very interesting. Yeah, I know on the on the curve gauges, it's a weekly vote, and they update you know every Thursday, I think. Um, for uh, for you know they they set the next week's allocation and you know they don't change too much generally yeah. but uh but they could and sometimes have um <coughs> i can tell you that the splinterlands community uh would would be all over having sps dec and vouchers all having their own um their own uh uh, bridges because you know so splinterlands as, as an entity they said we're not doing bridges anymore regulatory stuff you know whatever um and so they brought in this uh terra block uh organization to do the bridging for ethereum and for binance smart chain and uh people have not been so excited about the experience there hmm. um so uh so yeah a wrapped version you know you're not limited to you know, the liquidity that you can pull from other sources. So that might be an attractive uh, thing to do. Yeah. yeah. That's the cool thing about the protocol that we've built is that it can literally fork itself and create, you know, anything. And uh, that's all going to be on, on the governance votes to determine that. So I, I do think it, I, maybe it'd be cool to do a governance vote for, and anyone could put up the proposal for it. Um, to launch an SPS vault, for example, and we could put it to a governance vote and anyone with X Polycub can, can vote up whether or not they want an SPS vault, which obviously could lead to the Splinterlands community saying, let's buy some X Polycub as a community and, and vote up the idea of putting an SPS vault. And then once they vote it in, then they have to vote the yield into it. And then uh, that may cause them to buy even more X Polycub because potentially some existing X Polycub holders may say, no, we don't want you know, we don't want you to have a 2x multiplier on your SPS vault. We want to keep those multipliers for, for Polycub Weath and, and for uh, PHBD-USDC and PLEO-MATIC. Um, so then they have to buy up more Polycub to vote, basically vote the SPS yield down. And then you kind of have that fight over Polycub, which ultimately drives the yield of the whole platform up because the Polycub price goes up. So um, it's a cool self-feeding mechanism there. Yeah. What's up with saying her poor little cubs feeling a little down at all this poly cub attention. <laughs> this it's is all coming cool back thing. to the mothership. It eventually. all goes, it all feeds back. My camera just went out of focus. It all feeds back into cub. That's the cool thing. All of this stuff can just feed right back into it. But when? But when? Soon. <laughs> all right, soon. If I had to guess. All right. And uh, more teeth. <laughs> well, so that's actually leads to a question because, um, some of my normies actually said to me, they're like, we feel like Cub DeFi has become a dead project. And I was like, well, we still have IDO number two uh, out there. And then also um, bonding is going to get pushed to Cub after it gets pushed to Polycub, which I'm sure Neil just said when three times in his head about bonding. Um, but yeah, so I it, it, like IDO number two, is that still uh, happening or what? Yeah, IDO number two is still on the horizon. Um, what I'm looking at for Cub right now is a lot of these Polycub features being ported back. Um, and um, what I think is, is obviously, is obviously um, what I think is exciting about Cub is that we're using all these features on Polycub to really just like, like leg Cub back into the, you know, into the future of DeFi, which is Cub's going to have protocol and liquidity, Cub's going to have bonding. Um, Cub is going to have BHBD potentially, which drives a bunch of revenue into the protocol and liquidity. Um, and, uh, you know, all these things kind of combined uh, puts, puts Cub, 
I don't know if you'd say it puts it back on the map. Maybe you'd say it put, puts it back on the map. Um, and uh, obviously like governance too, like having cub governance uh, where anyone can vote on proposals and stuff and then cub changes over time. Um, and all the very same things that we're talking about with polycub get ported into cub. Um, that's the cool thing about this DeFi stack idea is that you can constantly be moving features back and forth. Wow. I can't and I do think long run, we, yeah, I think long run, we start to use bonding and stuff because Cub still has its high inflation rate. So we start to use bonding and stuff to build a huge protocol and liquidity on Cub. And then um, governance votes start to go live and maybe people want to change the inflation rate of Cub, um, maybe to increase it or decrease it, which could get, could get kind of interesting as people fight over Cub governance stake. Um, Cub is, a, Cub is a, actually a lot more malleable than PolyCub which is kind of kind of different to think about because there's so much attention on Polycub right now, but Cub is very malleable because the, you know, Polycub has, Polycub has very set in stone inflation rates and everything. So um, it's less agile in terms of what it can integrate. Cool. Yeah. And, you know, the other thing to consider is that, you know, it feels like forever, but Polycub is six weeks old. So. Right. <laughs> Exactly. I mean, yeah, we it's haven't just... gotten to the, we haven't gotten to the, in fact, I was actually disappointed because like I'm tracking obviously my airdrop and I'm like, crap. I was like, we like, we have like less than three weeks, basically. I think it's less than three weeks at this point. Yeah. It's just, sad. it's just time in crypto gets all distorted. Right. Sad well, and then speaking about airdrop. Cub, you know, if uh, obviously with Polycub, we have this really big roadmap and all these features that we've built over the last seven months. Um, and you're kind of seeing them all start to come to light because basically the way we did it is we developed all the features on the, on the, you know, in the beginning. And the idea that I had is that if we develop it all in the beginning before it even launches, then we can kind of sit on all these features that are developed, but not like fully tested and integrated. And then the testing and integration process is a lot smoother and faster than building something from scratch, testing, and then integrating. Um, so basically we've built it from scratch already. Now we're just like the governance thing, right? Like look how fast we can Im implement governance or PHBD um, or, you know, the collateralized lending. It's it's all integrated a lot faster when we've already built it. And now we just need to do the, the polishing basically. So we built it, We it's almost like, you know, if you relate like related it to real estate, like it's like we did an unfinished basement with roughed in plumbing and now we just got to finish it and polish it. And uh, and and that's really where we're at with, with a lot of these different features. Um, so, so my point to that is all this big roadmap of features is, is the focus right now for Polycub. And, you know, in the long run, we, you know, we basically expect Polycub to do extremely well with, with all these different, you know, governance, collateralized lending, uh, PHBD, everything being in governance, um, you know, all these different proposals for the different vaults all being in place. And then um, maybe, you know, I don't, I don't know what the timeline is going to be because we were talking about this before Polycub launched, but we basically have the button ready to, to click and do Avalanche Cub or, or Phantom Cub. And, and uh, obviously we can do it differently than, than Polycub in, in some ways. And, and, uh, and that gets interesting because then the airdrop goes to Cub holders again. So I think, what's, I think what Cub is going to look like is that it's in this kind of like, if you look at like Xrune or a lot of these launch pads, when something's launching right before the launch and during the launch, it go, the token goes crazy. In between launches, it kind of it kind of goes down and just kind of sits sideways for a while um, until the next launch. So I do think Cub could look like that for a while, um, especially while we build up to bonding and, and lending and everything on on Cub. But but yeah, I think I think people miss the point of of the DeFi stack idea. Maybe we need to talk more about it. Yeah. Well, we got to see it in action. That's the right. that's the thing. So let's let's roll out some technology on Polygon and let's port it back to to Cub um, and, and push buttons and go out on other blockchains. <laughs> I, no, just for for what it's worth, my vote for additional like Avalanche and Phantom, whatever, is like no changes. Let's just get it out there because <laughs> you know just uh, just to minimize friction. Either. Well, the the things that are going to change, and obviously there's there's a separate dev that's working on like Avalanche Cub, for example. So the things that are going to change, just from my discussions with him, are mechanics. Um, 
So, you know, Addicted has had a lot of posts and stuff talking about what he thinks mechanics would look like for Avalanche Cub and uh, and what it could look like to be a better platform. Um, and yeah, my free P BTC just said, you know, it'd be nice to have bonding from the start. So, um, you know, Neil, you said the same thing. So, um, you know, <laughs> when, when Avalanche Cub launches, it's going to actually have bonding. The first step of the launch is going to be bonding. So it's going to bond and then it's going to keep going. Um, and, uh, and then obviously all the vaults will start to launch. And I think we're going to do something about a lot differently with the vaults on Avalanche Cub. It'll be a lot less focused on external vaults, a lot more focused on, you know, a Leo. And, uh, you know, if we end up doing like an a hive or an a HBD, um, it'll be a lot focused, a lot more focused on those wrap tokens where it can generate a lot of revenue, um, for the protocol. So, um, and obviously the inflation rate will be a lot different too. So that, that stuff could get interesting, but obviously right now the focus is on these roughed in features that we've built for Polycub, like governance, bonding, collateralized lending and getting those rolled out and, uh, and obviously building that treasury for Polycub. So when bonding? Soon. <laughs> I feel like I'm like dying on the vine over here waiting for bonds. <laughs> It'll be soon. Very, very soon. All right. Well, it is one o'clock. Um, if you want to jump here or if you want to do some uh, general market commentary. So we seem to have been through most of the questions. People are chatting, you know, saying like, yeah. um, whether it's MVP or not. But uh, <laughs> I like this uh, robot head hitting the win button. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's. I think we're I think we're good on the question side. Cool. All right. Sounds good. All right. Will, so uh... um, so last question, last win. Uh, when Bitcoin at a hundred thousand, because that fixes huh. everything. <laughs> I heard okay. someone say they think Bitcoin's going to a million by the end of the year. <laughs> that must be true. I heard it on the <laughs> I think internet. I saw that. I think I saw that same uh, interview at the Bitcoin conference. Someone posted it on, I forget, Twitter or something. Yeah. It was actually like N MSNBC. I don't know who the guy was. I guess he's somewhat uh, relevant, but. Um, yeah, he was talking about uh, 100,000 by the end of the year and then like millions waste, you know, is inevitable. And, and he just basically went back to you have a fixed supply. That's not often that you have a fixed supply. Anytime you have a fixed supply, it's a lot easier to dictate and predict things because it's just, just a matter of demand, which right. I guess he's not wrong. And more money keeps coming in, especially institutional money. I know Fidelity is, you know, starting to plow way more money in. And, you know, you think about that, you got companies that have, you know, billions, if not trillions on the assets, they could easily, you know, I mean, they can move Bitcoin on their own. They could. They could indeed. So, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I think it's a, a wild card. I'm not going to say that, you know, we see 100K this year. Um because I don't know how inflation is going to affect crypto and if crypto is going to move with the stock market, which I personally think is going to struggle the majority of this year, um, as it already has, it was down in Q1. Um, so even if it, you know, rallies, it's still essentially trying to get back to even. So um, I really, yeah. I, I have like no conviction, to be honest with you, in terms of picking a direction. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, with the stock market, I think, the the inflation numbers are getting out of hand. The Fed is going to have to pump the brakes, and people will freak out, <laughs> and we'll see the market crash. And then after after there's been enough pain and they can't take it anymore, then they'll turn the print, press, the printing presses back on. I'm I'm already freaking out. I just uh, like I closed on a refi last week, and luckily that rate was locked in. Rates have soared over the last month, month and a half, and in the last week they jumped like a point. I just yeah. got quoted. Just got quoted at six point six two five on a thirty oh. year. I was oh. like, this shit was four and a half thirty days ago. Yeah. 
Yep. So yeah, I'm just like, let's not lock that in. I'm going to gamble that we get a little pullback uh, in the next few weeks after this crazy pump, but you know, we'll see how that impacts, uh, you know, markets in general, because cheap money has been the driver, right? That has been the driver of everything. So, although I don't think it's going to impact real estate, maybe single family a little bit, because if you look at history, the price of real estate has gone up with inflation every single time. You look at 70s and 80s, the price of homes literally was up the same amount. Inflation was up like over that like eight year span of crazy inflation. Yeah, well, I mean, it all comes down to can people qualify for financing, right? Uh, apparently they can somehow. I don't know how it worked back then. But again, you know, it's like how does it impact crypto? And we don't have any prior data to work with because yeah. this is the first go. We are the guinea pig. Well, we saw we saw with COVID that you know stock markets crashed and crypto crashed right along with it. So there was that correlation. No, I agree with that. But I'm saying just in terms of the impact of uh, inflation when it comes to crypto, because crypto Definitely. is always talked about as an alternative investment. So you think an inflationary environment like this would have a certain impact? But I just I, I don't know. But like this is this is the test. Like this is the beta test. Right. Yeah. So. Will people allocate that inflation to buying more crypto, or will they? pull back into defensive position. Yes. I do believe that a recession is the catalyst to that, that narrative of crypto and Bitcoin being a alternative investment slash, you know, uh, store of value. I think we have to actually have a recession to get that decorrelation. That's just my opinion though. Could be. Shit, I should be recording this. That's some good TikTok content. <laughs> this is recorded. You just get a clip uh, from Cal. Sure, I'll grab a clip from, clip from the YouTube. Yeah, do it. Anyway, so Neil, just tell me when I'm going to be uh, rich. When, 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 when Bitcoin 100K? <laughs> <laughs> Give me a date, Neil. I'll, I'll say, uh, so, so the stock market hit its COVID low on my birthday, uh, March 23rd. So I'm going to say March 23rd of some year. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> all right well i guess what's really good is that um poly cub cub and leo are and really not all that correlated to any of this so how about just when when moon on those because that's where majority of my exposure is anyway moon hence soon. my uh, hence my underachieving cal says moon soon okay moon soon all right right on well all right. I think that's a, a good place to leave it for, for this week. Yep. And um, we will, uh, what's next week? I don't even know. 20 something? 26? 26. Something like yeah. that. April 26 will be the next one. It'll be 11-ish, 12-ish, something like that. Um, <laughs> you know, Eastern time. Yeah. So uh, it, it floats around a little bit. We'll see if I have any stories for uh, yet another crypto conference Friday in Palm Beach is a big uh, oh, yeah? crypto, crypto and NFT. And then the next week is uh, the permissionless conference, which I don't think I'm going to go to because that's more just metaverse NFT. But yeah, now there's a, another event going on. It's a one day event though, Friday in Palm Beach. But you know, Palm Beach, pretty much where all the money is. That is where all the money is. So all I will right. be out there networking and uh shilling with my swag <laughs> sounds good all right i'll catch Do you it. guys next week all right see you guys have a, take care guys